Well done, Dan. Tell us about this job. G'day guys, radio. So um, this one's uh, a bit of a different build for us. This is a Victron build. Um, customer requested Victron. Pretty happy with the functionality that Victron offers. So um, that's what we went with for this particular customer. So what we've done, same as most of our builds, we've installed everything under the seats. Um, so we've got our chargers, MPPT, DC DC, inverter, fusing, isolation, everything under the this seat. We've got our battery, battery isolator, inverter fuses, and all that sort of stuff uh, under the opposite seat. Now, before we go too much further, this is one of the last builds that we'll be able to do in this format. Um, it's pretty close to the cutoff time for um, AS3001. Um, November 18 is approaching, so we won't be able to do exactly the same as this build moving forward. They're gonna have to be slightly different, some ventilation, um, some enclosures, all those sorts of things for the batteries. Everything else outside of the batteries is compliant to AS3001 part two, 2022. So all of our solar, uh, solar isolation, solar fusing, uh, labeling, all of the rest of the components, all of our 240 volt wiring, everything is done in accordance with that particular standard. It's just the lithium battery component of that particular standard that we still have followed the grandfather clause with. So, uh, as I say, this, this particular customer, this van is a new van to them. Um, so they bought it, I think about six months ago, 12 months ago, something like that. And um, yeah, basically, they're ready to start traveling. Um, so essentially this van has, you know, a serious amount of capacity on it. So we've got a 600 amp hour bank. We've got a 3000 watt inverter. We've got 1140 watts of solar on the roof. Um, we've got the ability for him to plug in portable panels as well. So there's a, there's a Anderson outside of the van, which is going through the DC DC, which can then charge um, from portable solar. We've actually in this build used an Enerdrive DC DC instead of a Victron DC DC. There's a couple of reasons for that. The Victron Orion is only a 30 amp charger. Uh, it's in my opinion, not as good in terms of its ability to charge as the Enerdrive unit, plus it doesn't have um, a solar input. So you can't use both of those things at the same time in, in uh, a Victron Orion. You'd need a separate solar regulator for that, which, you know, it just becomes a little bit more cumbersome. So um, this one also has a Servo and a Touch GX. Um, so the Touch GX is up here in the, in the overhead cupboard. Um, so this, this is the appliance cupboard that um, was part of the van build. So we have interfaced uh, into this particular area for both the 240 volt wiring and the servo, uh, sorry, the touch. Um, so owner can come in here and control his, um, control his system. As you can see right now, it's I think it's about nine o'clock in the morning and we're already sitting at 100, 865 watts. Um, so with the two solar regulators, they're never ever gonna be close to max. They're always gonna be unders because they've only got uh, 570 watts going to each of them, which for a 50 amp MPPT, that's well unders. So they'll never, they'll never hit saturation, which is good. Um, one of the key things with these particular inverter chargers as well is they generate a substantial amount of heat because they are a transformer based inverter charger. So the difference is with, let's say, for example, in, in some of our other builds, we use the Enerdrive products, which are high frequency inverters. So they generate less heat um, than a transformer based inverter charger. Um, so what we actually do with these builds is uh, I set an exhaust fan up in the cupboard that is then controlled by the system, both the servo and the 
uh, the inverter. So it will switch on the fan for temperature, for inverter load, and for charger load. So any of those three functions will turn the exhaust fan on and it'll draw air from inside the van and push it out so that any heat generation inside this cupboard here is pushed out. Um, we obviously program that all into the system, um, set up the wiring for all of that. So this van pretty much now uh, has the ability to run everything as usual. We give the client the ability to run their three-way fridge. So this is an older uh, Dometic three-way fridge. So they can run that on, on power if they need to. Um, and because we've got so much energy being generated, um, they, they can actually do that quite comfortably. Um, so what did you just do there? I'll just switch the inverter on. You've heard, you see that's just flicked on. You see the microwave coming on here. Mm -hmm. And you can now see that the fridge is switched over to power. So the fridge, the fridge will be able to run on, on inverter when they're off grid. If they've got enough capacity left in their battery bank, enough sun, um, they can choose to run that, saves them running gas. Um, hot, same with the hot water system. The reason I do that is because my belief is that if you can, why not? You've got a, a substantial amount of energy sitting underneath the seats here. So if you've got the ability to run that rather than using your gas, it doesn't cost you anything. Well, you've already paid for your battery system. So why not use it? Why pay extra for gas? Potentially saves you a trip running out from Ningaloo, for example or you know, a two to three hour trip back into a main um, town to get yep. gas, so absolutely reserve. Absolutely, on you know, save yourself that mm. bumpy ride on Corrugator Rose for three hours into a remote town somewhere to fill a gas bottle up. Mm. It's not necessarily the most fun, enjoyable thing to do when you're off-grid camping, so yeah, why not? Run it on run it on 240 if you can, if you've got enough energy, so. Um, yeah, so basically this, this customer now is completely fully off-grid heaps of heaps of options for running 240 volt appliances they think they're going to have an induction cooker um, they've got a few other specific appliances that they want to be able to use but in general they just wanted a substantial amount of capacity to be able to do all the things spend as much time as they can possibly spend off grid so that's what we've given them they are going to run starlink actually that is something that they are going to do um, that's another part of the story as well. Um, these guys still are working, so they will be traveling and working remotely. So Starlink is important to them. So that will be plugged into this system as well. So this is a fully integrated system with the capacity to run 240 volt appliances off grid. Yep. Um, and a pretty big build with 600 and 1140 on the roof yep. with a 3000 um, watt inverter so they can run most appliances off grid yep. for a respectful amount of time Absolutely. including their air conditioner yep awesome and this one had a little bit of a curly with yeah. a um illegal gpo unsafe gpo and you fix that yeah so it was it was done post i'd say anyway i you know it's hard to tell but um it was done post manufacture so mm. this the, there's a powerpoint on the side of this particular cupboard here um, which is different to all the other GPOs that are in this van. That's the replacement that I put in. Oh, um, and the replacement wires and everything. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, you find some funny things in caravans sometimes and it's not great because obviously it's um, there's rules for reasons. Mm -hmm. and the, you know, the reasons why you need double pole we don't need to go into in this video, but... Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't a double pole outlet. Um, none of the cabling was mechanically protected, so it was just basically um, double insulated cable clipped up to the side of the under seat area and then passing through the side of the seat into the side of the cupboard as well. So let's just say as an example, I mean, this is, this is you know, one of those scenarios that we need to protect against. It's not likely to happen, but it could happen something gets dropped off this table, power's on, something gets dropped off this table that's sharp enough to cut through the cable that's been penetrated through the side of the seat into the side of the cupboard with no mechanical protection on it, mm. cuts the cable, or worse, 
cuts into the cable and then the person goes to grab the thing it's a metal appliance gets electrocuted mm. so they're the reasons why we need to follow the rules um, so when I see those sorts of things I have to notify the owner and fix them or isolate them so um, that's a big part of what we do if we do see anything that's non compliant non-conforming or non not to the standards or non-compliant um, we have two choices fix it isolate it they're the only two options mm -hmm. generally we fix it yeah but this is a beautiful old yeah. coromel caravan that's been um, very well built and now it's got an amazing out take off grid um, power set up so yep. these guys are ready to take off and work and um, go camping yep basically so all right cheers guys see you next time <laughs>